whole their whole model, Alex. For instance, a a Dick Sporting Goods or any of these kind of big chains, Macy's. They're built upon Starbucks. They're built upon growth and expansion, rather than more so, I should say, than increasing in-store sales and an innovation so, and an innovation. Well, I mean, bottom line here. People think that the New World Order is invincible. Christians thought that Hitler was the Antichrist in Europe, and so they laid down to him. And I'm a Christian, but, but modern Christians have been told, lay down to corruption, lay down to the chip, lay down to Big Brother, because it's invincible, it's foretold. Regardless, folks, we have a duty to fight corruption. Uh, you know, Duty is ours, consequence belongs to God. And I'm telling you, these dinosaurs of the New World Order are rotten and can be defeated if people will just get up off their backsides and realize that they don't have a choice. And I think with all this pain coming, in a way it's going to be a good thing because it's going to force people to finally grow up and face reality. What do you say to that? And we're going well, to call I agree. Us. You know, something old is dying and ugly and corrupt that deserves to die. As I said, what's bad for Wall Street is wonderful for Main Street. They kill this country. They killed our communities. They were the ones that funded these huge, ugly developments, not only in... Madoff is at the top of Wall Street. I mean, they're all a pack of crooks at the top. Let's take some calls. Ben in Virginia, you're on the air with legendary trends forecaster Gerald Salente. Ben, go ahead in Virginia. Hey, how you doing? Uh, I love the show, Alex. I just wanted to ask where he thought uh, banks like the Free Lakota Bank is going to play out in this new conflict, because the Lakota have actually started their own gold-based currency bank. I think gold banks that come out and say that their assets, your deposits are backed by gold, are going to be one of the biggest businesses that anybody could ever imagine. And because there's... Oh, by the way, here's a scenario that we're also relative to banks. We believe that being that they're putting the mantle of FDR on, on Obama, it is very highly probable that they're going to call a bank holiday as FDR did also uh, this after he was inaugurated. Is that the surprise to... is that the surprise Biden saying that on the 21st or 22nd Obama's going to do something next month that people aren't going to like? It could, it could very well be because there's going to we, we believe that the banking system it cannot su sustain itself in, a, in its current form, the way things are going now. And a bank so, holiday, for those that don't know, means you can't get your money out, and then they devalue your money. Yeah, and I love the words they use: holiday. You know, like let's have a holiday. The Patriot you know, like, Act, nice thing, you the know. New Freedom Initiative, Homeland Security USA, the Fatherland. Uh, anything else, uh, Ben? Uh, no, that's just about it. I just uh, really you, think that this Free Lakota Bank is going to be huge. All right, Darren in Maryland. You're on the air with Gerald Salente. God bless you, gentlemen. Uh, what do you? How do you see it playing out for those of us uh, who are on state pensions or Social Security? Well, it, it's going to be difficult. And as Alex said, you know, when when they close banks, they devalue currencies. So what you have going on here is that they're talking about a decline in commodity prices and how inexpensive things are becoming, and that's very true. But guess what? Your dollar is going to buy a lot less. You know, just in the last two weeks, the dollar's gone from against the euro, about 125 against the euro about two weeks ago, to today it's around 143. The dollar's tanking. The whole world knows what's going on. The United States, they're not printing money. I mean, this is just digital money. So, yeah, it's going to be very difficult for everyone. Absolutely. What's going to happen with, uh, what's going to happen with food production? With food? Uh, you know, well, you know, one of the things, one of the trends that we're, we're putting in the Trends Journal, we're calling it, well the, well, the old victory gardens that they had during World War II, people are going to start ripping up their useless lawns, you know, the growing grass that you can't eat or smoke, you know. Now, the and problem is the current delivery system for big agribusiness is going to break down, and people are rapidly already converting to more locally grown produce, as Gerald uh, Salente has written about. Thank you, Darren. Mark in Oregon, trying to get to everybody here. Mark in Oregon, you're on the air. Yeah, how do, uh, gentlemen, I wanted to ask, Gerald, uh, Gerald, have you any idea of the actual number of um, patriot militias that are in the United States? And what will be the flashpoints which will bring these militias into the fray? I, I have no idea how many there are. I think the flashpoint would be a uh, an atrocity 
that would be committed by the, I guess the red coach, you could call them at this point. More Wacos. Yeah, it's something bigger. You know, we're, 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 you know, Wacos was the kind of thing where people wrote them off as a sex, so, you know, eh, they deserve Yeah, troops be being overrun by protesters, getting scared, gunning down a crowd, something yeah, bigger that kind than, of thing. you know, exactly. something bigger than Kent State. And then I wouldn't even say so much the militia. Most of those that are big have been infiltrated are being watched closely, usually led by feds. It's the groups you don't hear about. It's the hunting club.